sanding and polishing your paint. I'm going to show you how to do it and let's get at it. Howdy folks, uh, Troy with V-Twins the V8s. I'm back today to do the second phase of our color sand and polish video. Behind me we have the door from the other day that we sanded from, from you know, glossy all the way from 1500 to 2500 to prepare it. Uh, hopefully you watch that video. If not, go back and watch that. And then from here what we're going to do is we're going to take this panel and we're going to polish it so it looks like our Imperial that's in the spray booth right now that's been all polished out. So what I have here in front of me is basically all of the tools that you will need to do this job. And I will go through them with you so you'll have a list of materials. Also, there'll be a link below in the description with links to purchase the products. Please purchase through my links and support me once again. Thank you. Um, so what we're going to need is we're going to need some microfiber towels. Uh, I have a couple of different kinds. I like to buy these. I buy them in bulk. I reuse them. I rewash them. Uh, they work really well. Uh, I can't really say much more about microfiber towels. They're great. Okay, uh, so we got microfiber towels and then we have a series of compounds that we'll use. I use the, the 3M Perfected system. So the first step in the system is the um, 36060. That's step one. Step two is 06064. Step three is 06068. So there they are for you there to take a look at. Then we will need some pads and some buffers, okay? I do things somewhat different than maybe other people do. I like to use a wool pad on my first application of number one. So I'll use a wool pad which I like Schlegel. They've been around for years. I've used these since I was literally a kid working at my dad's shop. These things are fantastic. 3M also makes a very good uh, wool buffing pad. Not all guys use wool. I like to use wool because it cuts very fast and uh, you can get your finish shiny pretty quickly, but then you have to follow it up with a white pad. So what I have is this white pad. Obviously, you can see that it's been used and it can be used many times. This pad is a five, I mean, 05707 from 3M. It's a white foam polishing pad. It's used with step number one. This one here is a quick release. So it, you buy this little thing that goes on your buffer and then you can pop this on and off very quickly you can turn it over and clean it which brings me to another um, product that I use uh, I use this spur tool here to clean my wool pads I use this kind of looks like a little a nylon brush I use this to clean my foam pads you want to clean your pads often to uh, remove all of the dried compound or whatever is in there so that's what's used with step one. When we get to step two, um, you'll notice white on step one, the pad's white. Step two, the cap is black, and guess what? The pad is also black. Very ingenious of the folks at 3M. That one is A05708. It looks just like the white one. It attaches with this same quick connect here, so it is two-sided. You clean it the same way as you do the, uh, the other white foam pad. And then we move into step three, which notice the top is blue. And over here in my little 3M pad selection, which is 05751, the pad is blue. This particular pad, I don't have a two-sided pad for this. This adheres to a Velcro backing pad that's on my buffer, which is going to bring me to the next 
set of tools that you'll need to do this. This is a machine polishing situation, so you will need a buffer. Don't get a grinder, get a buffer. This one happens to be by Snap-on. You can get them from a lot of different companies. You want one with a variable speed. Generally, we're going to use 1,000 to 1,200 RPM to do this. You don't want super high speed because you don't want to build a lot of heat. Um, secondly, a small buffer. Sometimes, I mean, in our particular project, it's probably not going to apply, but I did want to show this to you. If you buy a small buffer like this, it's very helpful in all your nooks and crannies, little small areas. It's very easy to handle, especially if you're not super um, experienced with a buffer. Uh, this is a lot easier to use. Uh, same thing with this. We can get all of these interesting different pads. We can get the um, wool style pad to go on here along with a white pad and a kind of like a orange or gold pad and also a black pad. I get these pads here from the folks at Gryot's Garage. They have a lot of great products. I use a lot of their products. There'll also be some links for that below. So with all of that, that's pretty much it. The other thing you may want to have is some guys like to wear a respirator. I don't bother. I just doesn't seem to bother me. It's not that dusty. And safety glasses so you don't get any compound in your eyes. And then I like to use an apron to keep all of the slinging compound off of me uh, so that when I'm done with my buffing I take my apron off and I'm not all covered with compound. So that's pretty much all of the materials that we will need and then we're going to get into setting these up and starting on the project. Okay so the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to get our buffer all set up for our first application which is step number one in the wool pad. So I have a wool pad here, it's not new, it's used, we will clean it and I will show you how. Um, one of the things that I will tell you about wool pads is when you use a brand new one, you will have tufts of lint everywhere. It comes out of the pad as you first use it, it's just the way that it is. So therefore, I do like to use a seasoned pad, not one that's worn out, but one that I've used before. That way there, I don't have to deal with all that flying tufts of uh, cotton everywhere. So anyway, so here's my pad. It adheres to my backer by Velcro. So, and it's got a nice edge on it. So I, I'm gonna stick that right on there like that. I'm gonna get my coffee out of here so I don't have any dust in my coffee. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean this. So to clean this, you'll notice the buffer turns in a clockwise direction. When you're looking at it like this, it's clockwise. You flip it over, it looks counterclockwise. The spur you run on here and it removes the dirt and it fluffs the, um, the fibers. So I'm going to make sure that I'm down around 1200. I let my buffer rest on the ground. I take my hand like this and I get it going. I run my spur along the edge and then to the inside. And as you can see, what's happening is it is... It's cleaned all of the dried compound out and it's fluffed up the pad. Um, this works kind of like uh, when you uh, rake your lawn, so to speak. So now I got that all set. I've got my compound. I'm going to put my apron on. I'm going to apply some compound, and we're going to start uh, buffing the panel. I've got my number one compound. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to work a small area. Much like I sanded, I am going to work this particular area here on down the line. And we'll get the bottom of it buffed, and then we'll move up through the door. So I'm going to put a small amount of this on the panel, like that. And then I'm going to fire up my buffer, and we're going to have that. Here. Now, one of the things I want to explain to you is how not to get in trouble with the buffer. Okay, the buffer turns in a clockwise direction. So therefore, if you lean on the top of the buffer, okay, 
it's going that way. If you lean on the side of the buffer, it's going that way. If you lean on the bottom of the buffer, it's going that way. I tell you this so you don't catch any edges with your, uh, with your pads. Okay, so we always want the buffer to be going off of an edge. So if I'm over here on this edge, I want it to go that way. I am going to lean on the front and let it shoot that way. As I walk down around this corner, I am going to roll a buffer and go like this. So that my, my buffer is turning like this, it's turning like that, and all the way like that. That way there, I'm always going off of my edge. Same with my body lines. I don't want to ride on my body lines because that's where my paint is the thinnest. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this. Now I am set at my lowest speed. First thing I want to do is I just want to basically spread the material. If I go full bore when I have my material on there, it's going to sling the stuff everywhere, all over me, all over the panel, and it's not going to be where I want it. Now I've got it there. Now. I can start popping. You'll notice I am polishing so I'm going off of the edge. Okay? I'm also not pressing on the buffer and I'm also keeping the buffer moving. So I'm moving and I'm using the front edge and I'm going in that direction. I get over to the edges of the panel and I make sure that I'm going off. Now, as I do this, I can look at my finish on an angle, and I can see if I still have any sanding scratches. So I just keep working my way down, I'm going along, and I'm following the same rules the whole time. you do this, you'll see you're starting to develop a bit of a shine, which is what you want. The more that you do it, the more the shine will come up. Um, any areas that it's not shiny or it's dull, it's probably not buffed enough. Um, so you're going to have to go back at it. My recommendation is, is that you do a small area, do it twice. I'll go back, I'll clean my pad, I'll put a little bit more on, and I'll do this area once again. Then I'll move down and do it again. Much like my sanding, a lot of overlapping and a lot of repetition. So I'm going to clean my pad, if I don't have much on there, and I'm going to apply my material just like I did before. I'm going to give it, ouch, I'm going to give it a quick here to make sure that my material doesn't sling right off, and then I'm just going to go right back at it. I'm going to keep my buffer moving, I'm going to make sure I'm not, I'm going off my edges, and I'm not catching any edges, especially when you first start to do this, it's always best to do it. I would recommend, if you've never done this before, to start in the middle of the panel and work your way out to the edge. That way there you get more of a feel for it. But basically this will polish it and when you're done with two, two applications of this, it's going to look pretty darn good. So I'm just going to keep working it down. What happens with the compound is as you buff this, the grit in the compound breaks down. So it stops cutting and it kind of dissolves itself. So you don't really have to worry about that part of it. Kind of, kind of a built-in feature. So I know about how far I went down over here. I'm going to keep buffing along like this. Pretty much, once I get it all cleaned up so I don't see much stuff on there. It's going to be just about done. So now, I've done this area twice. I should be complete. I've got my 
handy dandy microfiber cloth. I'm going to wipe this down like this. And I'm going to look at my surface. And if I look at it on an angle, what I can do is I can see if there are any scratches that need to be polished out. Chances are there aren't if I've done the area twice with the wool pad. Now I'm going to continue on down over here. I'm going to change cameras so you get an overview of the top and you can actually watch me do it. Okay, so I've applied my compound. I have my buffer, I'm going to do that same thing I just showed you. So I'm just going to kind of roll over this really easy. Notice when I get down here, I'm tipping my buffer like this. And see how that compound slung off of there? But that keeps my pad going off. So like I was going off that to the right before, I want to go off to the left. So I can't go like this because look the way my pad's turning. It's going to grab that edge. Okay, so if I want to be over here, I want to go like that. Same thing with on this body line here, I want to go like this. So you watch me do it. So I'm just going to go along like this. And I can go right along this edge like that. As long as I'm keeping it like this, like my pat, my rotations going with the uh, with the body line, or I can tip it like this and go off of it, tip it like this and go down. I'm just going to continually move this buffer back and forth. I kind of went all the way down the edge with my compound. Probably normally would just. Do this small center section right here. You can see how I'm just going along. You'll notice how the shine just starts coming up. As the uh, compound breaks down, the shine comes up and it starts to dry out. You don't want to buff it dry. Okay, now I'm using the technique I'm showing you. I'm using like the side of the buffer and I'm coming off of this edge. Get over here and I'm going to go off of this edge like this and when I get over to this body line I'm going to tip it like that so I'm going off of this this edge of the door and off of the body line work this edge kind of like this and then like this and away we go look at that okay so now I've got that done. What I'll do is I'll clean my pad and I'll grab my microfiber and I'll wipe this and take a look at it. I do have to do another application, but I got to be honest with you. I mean, I think it's looking pretty darn good right now. So we'll do another one. So I'm like down in here somewhere. And we'll just go along and we'll do this whole thing again. It's a long, tedious process. People wonder why it costs so much to have a car repainted, restored. It's time. If you want to have it done so it looks like a show car, it, it takes a lot of time. A lot of caring, a lot of detail.
And notice how I'm just using the same techniques. Just running it like that, coming back down on the bottom like this, making sure my pad is going off of that edge. Same deal here. I'm going off of the edge, off of the edge, and then when I get over here, I'll go up like that, so I'm not on that body line. And then I can, I can chip it, and I can do this too. Just want to make sure that my pad is coming off of my edge, not coming onto it. And uh, there we go. Let's wipe this with the microfiber. And uh, I think it looks pretty darn good. Yeah, so there's two applications of the... Uh, of the number one with the wool okay so now you've seen exactly how that I do it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue this same process so I'm gonna keep working these small 12 by 12 areas um, with the wool pad and the number one um, compound and I'm gonna do each area twice all the way on this whole panel do this again so first thing, I'm going to clean my pad. I'm going to, I'm working above the line. I'm going to use the same idea. I'm going to do a small area like this, and I'm going to make sure that my rotation is going off of the edge of this panel and off of the edge of this body line. So first thing I want to do is turn my pad slowly and spread my compound without slinging it off the panel. Notice that my buffer is going off of this edge. I always want my buffer to be going off of my edges. I'm going to start at the, up in this area and I'm going to work my way down. The reason I'm going to do that is the buffer is going to tend to, I'm going to work it so this turning is going like this. I'm going to work this edge and it's going to pull the compound continuously down. And I'm going to pull this compound right off. You watch how I go.
have my panel done two times with the wool pad from about here down. So what I have up here is I have this area where I have my body line. I'm going to put my helmet cam on and I'll show you how I buff that so I don't get myself into any trouble with the wool pad. So our problem area is right here. We're going to work this back to there, but where we're going to have trouble is in this body line right here and especially around these edges here. So I'm not going to use much compound. I'm going to work this from this end to that end because my pad's going to be going like this. So I'm going to work off of this edge and off of this edge and along this edge with the edge of my pad. So you watch, I'll show you how to do it. This little area right here. So I'm going to use more of the edge, this fluffy edge of this pad along this edge here. So you can see how I'm barely touching it and you can see where I'm getting really close to this edge. I have to be really, really careful. This is where a small buffer may come into play and we could use that, but I'm just showing you how to do it if you don't have one. So you can always use this edge of this pad nice and easy like this. I'm just gonna now I'm blending this back into that, back into my area that I have that is done, and I'll just continue to work this area. Be really, really careful in this particular area here and not to burn this edge. Notice how once I get into a small area like this, or I, should I say a, a tight area like this, I start working in a small, I focus on a smaller spot. So I'm just doing this particular area right here. I'm not going much further. I want to make sure I have this done. There you go. Now I'm going to work this part. Working it off of this edge and staying away from that other edge. I am holding this buffer up and this edge is just barely fluffing that paint. And I think what we'll do is we'll get the small buffer and we'll do this area with that. So here I got my small buffer all set up. I got my wool pad on there. I'm gonna clean this the um, same way. The thing that's not, that I like about this particular buffer, I have it on the lowest speed already, but when you turn it on, it starts off slow. So it gives you a chance. So here we go. Now see, I can get into all these little grooves. So much easier to handle. See what I'm doing here is I'm leaving my compound and then I'm coming over and I'm just grabbing a little bit of it and then I'm coming back and polishing this. I think this is doing a really really nice job on this. Same principles apply. You want your rotation to be going off of your edges. I mean this one's probably not going to bite something as hard as that big one. But still, if it catches an edge, you could end up with a burn and in an area where you're going to have to do some paint repair. And I really don't like painting things twice. So as you can see, I'm just working along this edge. And this little buffer just makes your life easier.
I don't have that big heavy buffer that I'm supporting all the weight. I can, uh, I'm not going to be fatigued. Just keep on going along like this. Once again, going back, overlapping my other areas, making sure that I have all of my areas buffed. But you get the general idea. I'm going to work this. I'll continue to work this all the way down and get this done. I'm going to hold the buffer like this, support it with my hand, keep all the weight off of it. I lock the trigger on and I'm just going to use this tufty part of the buffer to do this. So you can see I'm like barely touching it and I'm just letting it do its thing right along here. And I'm not spreading the compound. What I'm doing is I'm just going along, getting my edges, and then I'll take a little bit of that compound and I'll work it. And then a little bit more. Then I can roll my pad down and blend this area into this. And then roll it back up and clean it up. Notice how I'm staying away from that edge because my pad is going the opposite way. In other words, my pad, if I run it up on that edge, it will pull that and it will pull it and catch that edge. Looks pretty good. Now we're just going to work this top just like this. Now you can see my pads turning that way. I will be able to walk right off of the edge of this without any problems. I can go right along here, make sure I get this. Now if I want to use this to take care of the edge of that, what I have to do is I have to go this way. And then I can use that edge and I can go right along here like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that small buffer and we'll do that area and finish it up. All right, so I've turned my project. I've got the whole top of it all polished out at least uh, two times with the wool pad. The only area we have left here is the top of this door. And I'm going to buff this pretty much like I did on that top edge by using the edge of the buffer. I'll start down this end and I'll work it this way off of here like that. Work this all the way down. When I get over here, I'll flip my buffer this way so that I'm coming off of the panel. I very well may use the small buffer a little bit. So now I have the top of my door done two times with the wool pad and what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the foam pad. The reason why we go from the, um, from the wool pad to this foam pad is the wool leaves a certain fine scratch on the panel that the foam pad will remove. So like I said before, scratch refinement, we've gone from the 2500 grit scratches down to the scratches that the wool pad leaves. We're going to remove those with this white pad and then that will set us up for polishing. Foam pad and we've got this Velcro set up for our, our um, wool pad. We're going to remove this backer off of the buffer. We're going to take and put our adapter piece onto the buffer which will allow us to connect our double sided foam pad like that. Now, we need to clean this pad. We're going to use our brush. So we are going to use this brush to clean this. It's very, very quick. It knocks the dust and stuff out of it, all the dried compound. Now we're ready to go ahead and use our foam pad 
with our uh, step number one on this panel. This will go rather quick. Okay, we're going to be using the same principles with the foam pad as we did the wool pad. We're going to keep we're going to maintain our, our awareness of which way the pad is turning. We're going to use about the same amount of compound and we're going to work about the same area. It, this pad, you'll notice, has a different feel in the wool. It's more forgiving. Um, you, you don't really have to be as concerned with catching an edge or burning an edge with the foam pad as you do the um, wool pad because what happens is if you catch an edge with this it just tears a big piece of foam off of it so um, it's less less likely to burn your panel so I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time I'm going to go along with this. I will do this entire area two times as well and what this is going to do is this is going to just polish it up in other words the foam is going to remove the scratches from the wool pad so basically it's going to go much quicker because really all you're doing is you're just kind of polishing it up you're not really removing all the scratches like you were before but you will notice a big difference I'm going to put the small camera on I'll show you how I work this and then we'll work the other sides of the door and then you'll be able to see what this really looks like once it's done it's going to look a little bit more brilliant than what we have now right now it's super shiny but it, it's got kind of a like a haziness to it almost in, in, my, in my opinion I can see it I can tell that it needs to be polished more and that's where we're headed we're just going to continually polish finer and finer until we're done okay so now I have this top done I'm all the way down to here I took the liberty of doing this area here you can have a really good look at it it's starting to look pretty pretty smooth and pretty sweet and I don't know if you can really see the difference from like here up I did it with the foam here is still from the um, the wool pad but it looks more reflective and more refined to me so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do the rest of this door <laughs> the rest of this panel all right so now we are going to switch over to step two so to do that we're just going to take our white pad off we're going to put that in the bag we're going to take our wool pad and our rag that we use for this so this is the scenario um, once you're done with one compound you're going to want to put everything away uh, you don't want to use this the rag you used on compound number one you don't want to use that when you're using compound number two. You don't want any cross-contamination. Basically, what you want is a nice, clean surface. So I went over and I wiped this whole thing down super clean so I don't have any of the residue from the compound. Now we're going to switch over to the black pad for compound number two. I'm going to pop that on. I'm going to go get rid of this stuff, and we'll get um, the uh, compound number two, and we'll have at this. So I got my black pad. I've got my number two compound. And I'm just going to use the same deal. I'm going to start right here. Same process. I use about the same amount of material. And kind of everything is the same way. It's just 
a different compound, and the pad itself is a little bit softer. So this pad is designed to take the scratches out that the white pad left behind. And just like with the sanding, what happens is each subsequent polishing is a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. I still do like to double up and do each area twice. It's just what I do. That way there I can be assured that I'm really not missing any areas. This is much more polish-like than it is compound-like. So you can really kind of almost completely remove the residue with the pad. At, le at least until the pad starts to get saturated. So that's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on down. Okay, so here's our panel after the second step. You can see it, it's got a really nice shine to it. I mean, it, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, you could probably just run with this if you wanted to. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to step three and brighten this right up. Try and get a close up in here. You can really see what this looks like. Okay, so we got process number two completed. Um, we've wiped it all down, and we're going to get rid of our rags. We're going to take our number two pad and put it away. Now, my number three pad is a Velcro pad. I take this off, put this on, then I can put my... We're tooled up for our process number three. And Okay, so now we can just wipe this whole thing down and see what it is we have. There's our door. 
if you go in real close can't see any scratches imperfections looks great the other thing that's cool about this door this is the door that I picked and filed so it's got no body filler in it so that's the kind of results you can get and if we go like this we can look right down it and see how smooth it is and how flat it is and that's it okay folks that's it we have a completed project we've gone from um, pretty much a dust nib orange peel type of product that comes out of the spray booth to a highly polished and smooth surface Video number one showed you everything you needed to know about sanding it and getting ready to buff. This video was just about the buffing. So if you came in and you watched this, best bet would be to go back, watch the other video that I have on how to sand it and get it prepared. That way there, when you do it, you'll be able to remove all the sanding scratches. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Please like the video and subscribe if you could. Uh, support the channel. If you're going to do this and you have any questions, feel free to leave me uh, comments and questions below if you have a different way of doing it or questions or whatever I pretty much respond to everybody if you're gonna do this um, and you're gonna buy product please use my links down below that really helps me out gives me a little bump in cash so I can keep doing these videos these videos are a lot of work and take a lot of time but if you follow this video step by step you'll get these results I'll tip this up so you can have a good look at it right there it's I think it's perfect you know when this is on the rest of the car I mean you saw the the video that I uh, the pieces of the video of the of the rest of the car so I think it looks great so I appreciate you tuning in please like and subscribe click my links and good luck with your project